and uh, just a great endeavor. And mm -hmm. Ebony, welcome to the program. Thanks for having me, Tom. Thanks for joining us. You are the policy director with Social Security Works. And so tell us about yourself. So uh, I started at Social Security Works about uh, three years ago now, and I just became the policy director. Uh, I also do some digital work. Um, but I just love fighting for, you know, just causes and such. So I have a one-year-old son, and I'm married, and that's about it. That's great. Mm -hmm. So so this is not just a job. This is a mission for you. Yes. That's, that, that is great. So, Ebony, um, your thoughts on Al Franken's resignation? Uh, I think that his resignation came a little late, but I'm, I'm glad that he's, he's finally uh, resigned. I think his speech... Our, um, his announcement was slightly uh, more about him than, than it should have been. I think that this you know, discussion now should be more about survivors and, um, dare I say, victims of sexual harassment and less about the people who are accused of um, said acts. Mm. So I think that his resignation is timely, and I think that this isn't a bipartisan issue. This is something that needs to be a concern of Americans. So people like Donald Trump and people like Roy Moore need to also be held accountable for the ac actions and accusations that have come upon them. Um, so we should also call for Donald Trump's resignation. We should call for Roy Moore to stop running for Senate. Um, this is something that we need to address as Americans, not as, it's not a party issue. Yeah. In a larger uh, vision of things, it seems to me that what we're watching, um, much as we saw the first cracks in the dissolving of white power in the 60s with the Civil Rights Act and the Voting Rights Act and things like that. And well, and just the whole change in the zeitgeist, the, the whole, you know, the, there's been this, in my lifetime anyway, real substantial change. I mean, uh, uh, we're nowhere near there yet, but, but uh, it's been a breaking down. And now it looks to me like that what we're seeing is the breaking down of literally 6,000 years of male power. And, and uh, specifically white male power, although this is crossing races as well. Mm -hmm. And that, that seems to me like a really good thing. Um, I have a friend who's a psychiatrist, and we were one day, uh, we were both speaking at a conference, and we were having lunch, and he, we were talking about cocaine and heroin and stuff and drug addiction. And he said, you know what the most dangerous drug in the world is? And I was like, no, what? And he says, testosterone. It's more wars, more deaths because of testosterone than any other substance on earth. And it's like, whoa, you know. But, you know, it's, it's so true. And, you know, Franklin pointed out in, at, at, the, uh, at the opening ceremony to the Constitutional Convention in August of 1778, that the, or 1787, that the Iroquois um, had forged this bond that had lasted in peace for a thousand years. The Iroquois didn't let women or didn't let men vote. The women ran the show. So what are your thoughts on that, on the, on the death of patriarchy and, and the, uh, or the, <laughs> obviously it's too early to celebrate the death knell, but you know, the, the end of patriarchy and the diminishing of white male power in a way that opens space for, for women, for people of color, right, you know, all this. I think that, you know, after 6,000 years, it's about time. Yeah. Um, it's time that we bring some different perspectives into the conversation. And as we bring different perspectives, then we can expect to see different results. So we can expect to see a diversity of perspective in the political space and see some things um, changing. So I definitely think it's time for women to have more of a voice and feel empowered and not feel like they are dictated and ruled by men or what men think. I mean, I think that it's going to take a long time for, you know, that philosophy to kind of drain out. But this conversation, especially, especially about sexual misconduct, is a first step towards that and a first step towards people of color having more of a voice. Um, so I think that it's great and I think that, you know, we'll see what is to come. Yeah, yeah, it's, it's a, a very interesting time. Let's talk about Social Security. This is your area of expertise. Mm -hmm. And uh, who is Alex Azar and why should we be worried? 
So Alex Azar is Donald Trump's new nominee for secretary of HHS. So as we know, Tom Price was ousted uh, about a, a month or two ago because of his uh, private jets. Compulsive use yes. of private jets, yes. <laughs> his use of private jets. So now Alex Azar is the new nominee. And he's, dare I say, worse than Tom Price because he is a, a previous uh, pharma, big pharma exec. He also previously worked um, in HHS during the Bush administration, but then he used that position to move into Eli Lilly when they were under investigation, of, I believe, for a drug called Zyprexa, and he, he moved up the ranks over the years and became the president of Eli Lilly USA. And in that time, he oversaw the price of insulin increased by over 300%. Um, Over that, how many years? A relatively short period of time? Ten years. Ten years. So wow. that's a relatively short period of time for yeah. over 300%. Yeah. Um, and there are, you know, two specifically uh, famous cases of two men that actually died. One died after he was $50 away from raising money for his insulin. And another died as he was rationing his insulin because it was just unaffordable. And those are just two cases that are widely know. We have no idea how many other people, you know, died or became ill because the price of insulin was just too much for them to bear. And, and insulin is a, it should be a generic drug. I mean, it, insulin was developed in either the late 1890s or the early 1900s. It was the early 1900s that it was discovered. So you see that, you know, over this almost 100 year time span, Big Pharma, Eli Lilly, has managed to manipulate patents in ways that kind of, you know, um, prevents prices from going down. And they've also been rumored to be um, organi or coordinating with each other to um, keep prices high. Right. So it's just they're continually raising prices at the expense of thousands of people with diabetes. And insulin is needed to survive. It's not an option. Um, so, you know, big pharma shouldn't be able to put a price on people's lives. And the guy who did this at Eli Lilly is now going to be in charge of Health and Human Services, which is in charge of what? Pretty which is in charge of you know everything healthcare related, regulating big pharma. They're in charge of the FDA. Um, so why should we trust this person who basically spent ten years of his life, uh, at the very least, you know? manipulating drug prices and making a dime off of the, you know, the life and misfortune or the disease illness of others. Why should we trust him to run HHS for the whole of, of America? Right. It's just absolutely ridiculous. It's just another example of President Trump, or Donald Trump, rather, Thank you. Um, <laughs> manipulating uh, manipulating his, his power to... Um, uh, manipulate the middle class and working